Hey guys, it's Robin Arzon and Crafts and welcome to my craft room. I don't have a tutorial for you this week. To be perfectly honest, I just don't have the time for it with being behind with getting Robbie's socks and everything else done with Christmas and all. And I know you guys completely understand, but I didn't want you to not have a video this Friday. So if you're anything like me, you really enjoy seeing videos pop up regularly. Like on my channel, they go up on Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do you know when you turn on YouTube during that time frame on a Wednesday and Friday that you're gonna see something from Robin? And I know you guys would totally understand if I didn't have a video this Friday with everything that's going on with the holidays and trying to get Robbie's socks and everything else done. But at the same time, I kind of expect to have a something up. Like if it were me and I was sitting at home and I'd be like, okay, I know Christmas day that at 9 a.m. Robin's gonna pop up her Whip It Wednesday video. So when I come home from family and stuff and visiting, then I'll have that video to watch. Or I can watch it while I'm getting ready. And on Fridays when everything's crazy and settling down, maybe we're having pizza night, I can sit down and watch her latest video. I feel that way about the people that I subscribe to. So I kind of think that sometimes there's some of you guys out there that might feel the same way. So what I thought we would do is go ahead and just discuss my button project. Some of you that have been around for a while, you have heard this and you may probably have forgotten what my plans were for it because you haven't seen it in so long. But I have been getting a lot of questions, so I thought I'd just go ahead and explain it. Now, I don't remember when I saw it, whether it was in 2018 or at the end of 2017, but on Instagram, I saw where there was this group that was doing a stitch a day of an embroidery stitch. So they got out an embroidery hoop and they divided it up into um, 12 months. And then in each section for the month, some people did it very rigid like that and other people just scattered their designs all over. At the end of the day or the beginning of the day, you'd go ahead and put a stitch in. Some groups were doing something meaningful, like if it's Christmas this week, maybe they'd stitch a little Christmas tree or they'd stitch a candy cane. And other people were doing just a stitch. And the one group that I saw, like, let's just say the first day, they learned how to do a running stitch. So on day one, they'd make a running stitch. On day two, they might learn French knots. So they do some French knots. So for 365 days, they learn different patterns, different stitches, or different ways to put them together. Like if you put together the running stitch or the back stitch with French knots, this is what you'll get type thing. I thought, well, that was really cool. So I did try to start that project. And as I was getting everything ready, I came across a button a day. So there was this other group and they were showing things on Instagram where each day they would just sew a button down once again into a hoop. And I thought, wow, well, that was really cool. So I had started that. And as I explained in a previous video, I was having problems I wasn't thinking far enough in advance. I was like, okay, these are the buttons I have. I'm gonna, I had an, an oval hoop. It was, you know, really, it was probably about this big. I think it was probably 15 or 16 inches on the width and then maybe 10 or 12 this way. So I started putting my buttons in and I had them in a rainbow, like in the clock. So I had, I had the wedges done and everything. So I was putting them in and I was putting the big ones in and I was putting some medium ones in that I ran out of buttons. So I started putting some of the smaller one in and then some of my lovely followers sent me some buttons and I thought, oh, well, that's really cool. But then I had some of the medium and smaller ones in and they started sending me the larger ones. So they ended up kind of overlapping on them and the little ones were disappearing underneath them because you're only sewing these on through the center of a button. So it's really easy for a smaller button to get stuck and slide under. And then I had novelty buttons like birdhouses and shoes and purses that I wanted to add on. So I realized really quick that I was going to have to start all over. So I took all the buttons off and then I really thought about what I wanted. And I wanted a piece of artwork and I kind of wanted it to be kind of like a wave. So I took out this black rectangle fabric. It's, it, at this point, it's got a lot of fuzzy on it, so it's not quite as black anymore. It kind of has a brownish tint to it. I think the yellow buttons are setting it off and stuff, but I have some cotton batting, and I have a piece of what I consider ugly fabric. This is fabric that it just doesn't really go with my style of stuff. You guys know that I'm not about the little country flowers and everything. So I put this on the back, and I decided that I'm going to go ahead and put another backing on it. 
But for now, I'm just stitching through my black fat cotton fabric, my favorite cotton batting, and then just this piece of cotton fabric on the back. I'm using embroidery floss. And when I did the first one, I was making like a road map on the back and I was trailing from button to button. So if I sewed all of these buttons down, instead of tying them all off individually, you'd see that long thread. But even though I would tie it here before moving there, I didn't like that loose piece of thread. First, I thought it'd be really cool to be like a road map. But then the more I worked on it, the more I decided I didn't like it. Plus, I was getting my needle stuck in it and it was coming up through the fabric when I was moving over to a new space. Now these buttons would probably be a little bit more secure if I stitched them down by machine. It's hard to tell. I, I say they're down nice and tight because when I flip them to the back, I pull it really tight and I do a surge's knot, which is like tying your shoes. But when you do the once over, you do it again and then do like a, a square knot and stuff like that. So I have them tied on really well. But because it's just sitting on fabric, it's easy to make it feel like it's loose, but they're not. So as I get going through here, and I'm gonna have to purchase some buttons to make it fill in the different spaces. I do have some red down here. I was trying to like the red into the pink, the orange into the yellow, and then you get some of those ones that are yellow green, and then you get your blues and then down into the purples. Sorry. Sorry about bumping you. So then I have the purples down here. And I wanted to keep it in a certain way. I didn't want it to just be a rectangle. So I started taking some basting thread and I just, well at first I basted it in a lot of places just to hold it all down. But I also basted so that it went into these designs where it dips down here. It's kind of like a double, triple hourglass. It keeps dipping down. This kind of reminds me of a fishtail just because it has that shape. And then it widens out and it dips back down, widens out, dips back down and goes back. This one's not quite as a fishtail so that they're not equal on the ends. They're not all the same. This one is wider here. As you can see, this one's going down and this one's coming in. So it's not equal. And I'm fine with that because I like the way it's a little bit off that way. So I'm gonna keep adding my buttons. I'm gonna slowly work on it. It's nothing that needs to get done right away. It was mentioned that this is gonna be a very heavy project when done, and I hadn't thought about that. And yeah, it is gonna be a pretty heavy project. I can put it in a frame so that it's supported, or I thought I could also hang it from the end like this so it hangs lengthwise. I can worry about that part when I get there. I've got a lot of other things that I have to work on for it before I get to that point. Then I was thinking that to help also in a way of quilting it, now stitching these buttons down by hand with the embroidery floss. And as you can see, I'm trying to come close to the color so it doesn't stick out. I don't want a whole bunch of like white thread on the purple. Now it's not all perfectly matchy matchy because this is a pinky purple. So it's not a purple purple. I'm not going to be extreme to that point. I'm just trying to keep it reasonable Here's an example of how I'm going to start stacking them. This has, let's see, do I have another one of these buttons? It's a button like this that just has these two holes. So I decided to go ahead and put some more buttons in top and it gives it that layering. I'll come back to what I'm gonna do here in a second. Let me, I guess I should finish my first thought. So throughout here, as this fills in with the bigger buttons and the medium buttons to fill in the different spaces, then I will be able to start working more into 3D. I will be adding the buttons on top, like you see here. I will also be adding some of the novelty ones that'll sit on top so that they're either, they may be sitting so that they're sitting on top of the bigger ones, or they could be sitting just on top of this mess of buttons right here. And then I also have those, you know, they have that little itty bitty teeny tiny ones. They're probably, what are they, maybe about a half an inch. They're really, really small so that I can fit those into the little spaces to fill it in and like here and here. And then I also thought about putting some beads in and doing, there's a lot of different bead work you can do. You can make beaded flowers, you can make different, the, the like the little stems that come out and that, you know, they'll just come up 
and just kind of poke out straight. I can make loops and all different designs on there. So that's why I want to make this really into a big art piece. I want this just to be my foundation. And then I want what you actually see. You'll be able to see peaks of these in through everywhere because they're not going to get completely covered. But I do have this vision of seeing other things coming through. And I would like to still keep it like this. So purple is going to have the purple beads. And then, you know, the greens are going to have the green beads. Beads are easier to find in different colors than the buttons. It may come to the point where I just have to buy white buttons and dye them with red dye because that's also a simple technique you can do. I just need to do a little research to make sure that the color lasts. I need it to stay on there and not fade and wear off or anything like that over time because I do a lot of touching and moving when I'm working on this. Okay, so now in these sections, I was thinking about doing the sashiko. Sashiko is, from what I've seen, it tends to be a white thread and it's, it's a certain design. There's a lot of ones, I was thinking about the ones that are pluses. You can do a lot of pluses all through here and that they have, they have certain patterns where it, the, the thread just never crosses. If you go ahead and Google Sashiko and look it up on Pinterest or something, you'll see all the different designs, but it's basically just embroidery floss. So it's gonna be a way to quilt this section down. I wanna fill in all of these little mountains. They're not semi-circles, they're not half circles because of this shape, but I wanna fill in all of these with sashiko. And I might even add some French knots. Maybe I don't want to have purely sashiko. Maybe I want to have an outline of the French knots in the specific colors as it changes just along here and then have the sashiko. And I don't know if I'm going to do straight white. I think I'm going to do straight white, but as I'm talking, maybe I might want to do, I might want to do yellow and have it slowly fade into the green and have it blue and fade into the purple but I have it on both sides that I can work it. And I have even just the little ends down here. This is my end right here because I wanted to make sure I have enough room for whatever I'm gonna do, whether it's binding or whatnot. So I might just wanna pepper this right here with French knots because there's such a small area. But that's one of the fun things about a project that you've created. You really don't know where you're going with it, but you can do anything you want and you can change your mind. And I have no problem because while I want the end piece, I want the end piece that I want. So when I don't mind, I enjoy the process. So even right now, if I were to see something else that were to inspire me, I've got no problem with clipping all of these buttons off and starting all over again. The only problem I have with the fact that I did it with the last hoop is I've cleaned my craft room twice and rearranged things and I can't find all the buttons I had. I tucked them away somewhere nice and neat. I freaked out for a while because I couldn't find the button project. So I found the project. I found some of the buttons, but I don't know if I've already put all the ones I had on before back on here. Because I, I don't see too many of these size buttons. So I'm just going to have to go through. It doesn't hurt to go through the cloud craft room and reorganize things again and figure out where I put it. Because I put it somewhere for safekeeping. You know how that goes. You can never find it when you put it away somewhere for safekeeping. But for everyone that had questions, that is my button project. I may be crazy, but it's okay. I find that I'm leaning more towards doing art quilts than doing straight up regular quilts. Now doing the nine patches and doing the Dresdens and doing all the different ones like that, they're, they're really fun and I enjoy them. But first of all, I can only have so many quilts in my house. And my kids are very specific. They, they just want one quilt and they wanna love it until it's dead and then they want a new one. So they're not really recipients unless they see something of mine that they love and they're like, oh, I want that quilt, please. And I was like, sure, here you go. But they're very, very particular. So for them, it's more like we go fabric shopping, we pick out everything. My daughter is still looking at the different designs she wants for her next one. So she's trying to figure that out. Her current quilt is 10 years old. She has it on her bed every day. She is definitely quilt worthy. So she'll get a new one as soon as she decides on the design. And then we'll go and do our shopping. Both boys have one. I think Justin's due for a new one. But I know Robbie's, I just made his not that long ago. Well, I made his 
since he's graduated and it's only been two years. So he's, his has already been traveling with him a few times. So he's still got his, so he's in good shape. So I've been thinking more like art projects, art quilts, more of wall hangings and table toppers and table runners, but mostly some type of a wall hanging, just because you can have a lot of creativity in that small amount of space. And even though you're only working on a 12 and a half by 12 and a half square, it still could take you months and you could have tiny pieces and intricate stitches and stuff. So that's what I've been enjoying because I really enjoy that little bit of handwork. Sewing at the sewing machine is great and you still need to use your sewing machine when you're working on an art quilt, but I just don't always need to be making a large twin, queen or king size quilt. Now my favorite size quilt to make is a, a lap size. Just enough to get in there and make a quilt, have some fun, get it done, and you're over with. It's still small enough to easily put through my domestic sewing machine at home and to move it around and make all different designs. You can still do elaborate uh, quilting if you want. I want to try feathers one day. I just need to have the moment to sit down and practice it on something. I need to draw it out first so I can get that muscle memory before I actually tackle it on a project. So I hope you loved my little ramblings about my button project. If anyone knows of a good site, these are just regular old plastic buttons. There's just the cheap old crafty buttons. If you know of a good site that sells them at a reasonable price, because as you can see, it's going to take a lot of buttons. My Michaels has that one big bag for like $15.99, so I'd have to use the coupon for it, which I would use it anyways, even if it was $1.99. But that's not too bad, but they have a lot of the small buttons and I'm still looking for more. Uh, I don't need too many more of the large ones. A couple of them would be nice, but more of the, more the medium size, more the ones like this, I guess. So that's what I'm looking like that for. And as you can see, I don't have any white buttons or black buttons or gray buttons. I'm kind of sticking away from that. I'm going straight with the, the, the rainbow type color, something, you know, bright and colorful. I think this is probably like my darkest type of colors. And I, I just like these buttons. Look how thick they are. And I like how they're, they're lighter on one side. And this one has, it does have some darker colors in it. So that's fun. But otherwise, I'm trying to stick with some of the, you know, your, just your basic Crayola type colors blending through a little. All right, guys, hope you have a great weekend and a happy new year, and I'll see you next time. Bye.